Hello again everybody and welcome back to Trekworks. Well I've got something really unique to show you guys today and it's something that a lot of you have asked about over the uh, past couple of months and that's how I mount one of these models onto one of these bases. And uh, we're going to take you through that today. I've got a beautiful display going together from my friend Ralph over at Tenet Controls. I've built up this really nice uh, Pegasus Martian war machine here and Ralph has a brand new electronics board which features uh, lights and sounds for this model and I've got this great looking base here from Wolf Base and you can see we have a gorgeous uh, plaque on the top of this from uh, HDA Model Works I really love the artwork on this Jerry is so creative he's uh, added uh, the original lobby poster for the movie and changed up some of the uh, wording down here to include built by Trekworks and lighting by Tenet Controls and model by Pegasus and if you didn't look really closely at that, you wouldn't even notice it. So I think that's a really cool touch that Jerry added to this. This is the original artwork from the uh, lobby poster, and it's just so colorful and looks so 1950s. I just love it. And the model is going to look gorgeous on top of this. So what we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to take you through um, getting this all prepared and getting the model mounted on top of this, and we'll have a beautiful display when we're done. All right, so let's uh, get set up here. I'll get the camera repositioned, and we'll go through our first step. The first thing that we want to do is drill a hole in the center of this plaque to uh, pass our mounting rod down through that. So let me get set up for that and we'll be right back everybody. Alright everyone, well we're back and we're ready to start here. We're going to be uh, drilling a hole through the center of this of course, so what we have to do first is find the exact center. And you can see what I've done here is I've placed a little bit of this masking tape on the front side here to protect this when we drill through it so we don't get any scratches on this. We're going to work from the back side here, and this piece is uh, 10 by 10, so we should be 5 inches in the center. So I'm going to mark this uh, with my tape measure here, and just kind of start off a little bit off center here. And make a mark, and then we're going to go over here to the 5 inch area here, and make another mark. And... That should be my center, or relatively close to it. Now inside the base, as I'll show you in just a second, Dave includes a nice little wooden pedestal in there and he doesn't attach that so you can move it around a little bit to position everything. But we're going to get this nice and close. So what I'm going to start off with is a really small bit here. And we're going to drill a little pilot hole first to get started. Actually what I want to do, I almost forgot here guys, I'm going to put this up on a uh, wooden block so that we don't snag our towel when we go through here. <clears throat> Alright, we're through there. Now what we're going to do guys is we're going to work up to the next size. Uh, you just want to gradually work your way up in size here until we get to our eventual final size, which will be 11 30 seconds, which is the uh, diameter of our mounting rod that we're using on the model. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and put this hole in it now. It doesn't take much to drill through this, it's pretty thin. Okay, now we're going to go to our final size here. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll kind of clean this up a little bit, and we'll come up over here to the front side, and we should have a nice clean hole there, and which we do. Okay, looking really good. Now our rod should be able to pass through that. We'll be centered here, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the uh, base itself, and we'll see that we have this uh, nice arrangement here that Dave's got going. I'll tilt this up for you just a little bit here. We're off center just a little. And you can see that Dave's got a little junction block in here, which makes our wiring nice and easy. And we've got this little pedestal, which has already been pre drilled. I asked Dave to do this at 11:30 seconds so our rod will fit down in there. And um, 
So what we're going to do now is we're just going to kind of lay this in here. And we're going to move this around until we see our hole uh, centered up. I'm just kind of looking straight down in this. Okay, that looks good to me. And so now we've got our location. <clears throat> and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, temporarily uh, hot glue this in place uh, so that I don't move it and then uh, there's some nice little screws that Dave has included with this and we'll uh, go ahead and bolt that down and then we can start working on the wiring part of this so I'll be right back with that guys okay guys well I finished up getting the uh, support piece mounted here in the middle as you can see I've uh, hot glued that in place like we talked about I lowered down the lid on there to make sure we were lined up and you can see that what I've done now is I've attached these little wood screws here and secured it permanently so we've got that all secured in place and ready to go so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to uh, hot glue these uh, speakers and this control board uh, in place here so that we get all that locked down and then we'll be able to move on and start doing our wiring here I've drilled a couple of holes in the bottom for the sound for the speakers. Just a basic round hole that allow the sound to travel through there. Um, and I like how everything is laying out here. Now we've got this nice little junction box here that I was showing you that we're going to be able to connect all of our, our power coming in. We've got a jack that Dave has mounted on the back here. We've also mounted our uh, switches all back up so you can see this. I've got these three little momentary switches that are included with Ralph's uh, lighting kit and then a power switch here that I mounted. David already pre-drilled these holes so that was uh, a really easy install. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue the circuit board down now. I've got that just where I want it. Okay. And I've got my solder iron warming up here. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to um, what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to uh, pass the wires through our uh, hole here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to get the the model and we're going to run our wires down through that. Let's just get this going here. I've got the wrong end here guys. I've got a little scuff mark on this brass tube that I want on the bottom that I don't want to have showing so we're just going to flip this around real quick. Sorry about that. here and we'll insert the rod very carefully into the model here. This 11 seconds diameter uh, rod worked out perfectly for the hole that's already uh, on the bottom of this kit so that worked out great. I'm going to back up here just in case we're cutting some of this off for you guys and uh, 
now what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to have to bring the um, the base, uh, the plaque, up onto the rod here. So we've got to run our wires through that. careful here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to temporarily uh, take a little bit of masking tape and uh, tape this uh, lid or plaque uh, to the model. So that will help hold it up out of the way while we uh, while well, we work on our wiring down below here, and then once we're all finished, we can just simply lower the uh, cover down onto the top, and we'll be ready to go. So now I've got to thread these wires through our little pedestal here. tweezers here and help me fish these out. happens to be the uh, <laughs> the thinnest gauge wire out of the bunch here and I'm uh, I probably should have put this one through first there we go all right now we want to make sure we don't pinch anything as we're going down in here all right so I've got the rod started now Got just enough wire here to start connecting everything. Okay, everybody, well, what I'm going to do is pause really fast here and I'm going to get my uh, instruction sheet from the uh, wiring schematic for the board here and make sure I get everything connected properly. And we'll start doing that as we uh, come back. See you in a second. guys I'm back again and I've used Ralph's really excellent wiring instructions to get this all wired up everything's been connected and I've uh, powered this thing up now you might be able to see it hold on let me turn this over headlight off and uh, we went through our little momentary switches and tested everything got our sounds working dying some at the end. I'm going to show you these sounds in a little bit more detail here in a second, guys, when we finish this up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use a bit of canopy glue here, and we're going to glue down our uh, plaque on top of the base. I don't want a super strong glue on this in case we ever have an issue inside the model or inside the base here with the wiring, which we shouldn't, but we're, we want to have this so we could possibly... Uh, open this back up at some point in the future if we had to. This glue will be strong enough to hold it, but not too strong. 
So we've got that ready to go. So I'll loosen my tape here on the top now and lower down our plaque. Should be looking good here, guys. All right. So we'll bring this down nice and gentle like. down under that glue, turn our model here a little bit. All right, this looks great. And let's get you propped up here just a little bit. Let's take it, wipe off our excess canopy glue here. Really like this glue, guys. I use it all the time. You hear me talking about it all the time. The reason I do is because it doesn't stain anything. If we get it on anything, it'll wipe right off. But yet when it dries, it'll be nice and sticky. And hold everything in place just like we want. Okay, well here is our Martian War Machine all mounted up on our beautiful little base here. I'm going to kind of clean things up here a little bit, guys. I'm going to come back and show you a nice shot of this and show you all the features that this model has. I'll be right back with that, everybody. All right, here I am, guys, back with you one final time for the big reveal of our Martian War Machine. It's all finished up and mounted on the base now, and you can see it's an absolutely beautiful display. I'll take you around here up close and have you look at the model itself first and uh, talk to you about how I built this. You can see that I used, I mixed up my own paint here and I made this beautiful rich copper color and then I coated that with a, about three or four coats of clear. Hopefully in the light here you can see the nice sheen we've got on this. I wanted to make it look really really slick and metallic looking and uh, it really really looks good. And then I added these little streaks of weathering on the top and the bottom. Now the model looked pretty pristine at the beginning of the movie when it, when it first appeared but about halfway through and towards the end of the movie after it had done a lot of battle you could see these black streaks were painted on at some point so I matched those on the top and the bottom and uh, it really came out nice you can really see the sheen on the model on the bottom side because the lights not glaring on it so much but uh, I wanted to show you this beautiful plaque here up close and I really love the effects that Jerry put on this uh, at HDA Model Works you can see he added the lighted by Tenna controls and built by Trekworks there right into the movie credits and it's kind of subtle you wouldn't even notice it but it's there and I think it's a really slick addition that he did to this thanks so much for doing these Jerry it's a beautiful beautiful plaque those vibrant colors that they used they were really trying to promote color movies and Panavision back in 1958 when this movie was made and uh, so that was that's really really cool and it looks perfect okay guys now we're gonna turn this on the first thing we do is hit this left switch here and that activates our power and uh, Ralph has got this set up so that you can display it just like this with this nice subtle glowing effect with no sound so you know the sound might get irritating after a while so you can have it on display just like this and one of the beautiful things I want to show you guys is look at how those green lights on the bottom illuminate that uh, plaque it, it, it almost makes it look like a black light poster or whatever I mean that is really really sweet looking and I absolutely love that okay guys we're gonna hit our first sound here which is the hovering sound and you can see and hear how nice and clear our sounds come through on this model. Again, Ralph's using two speakers. I've got those mounted, and the sound is coming out the bottom of the bass. Get that really cool, menacing, hovering sound, just like in the movie. Okay, one more push of the same switch, and you get the heat ray effect coming out of the Cobra Eye there on the top. And I have this built so that this little cobra head can pivot where you want to put it. So that's really cool. Okay, we'll kill that sound. We come over here to the far right and we can activate our wingtip laser effect. Okay, and you can also combine these sounds, guys. I'm going to go ahead and do that here for you. Okay, so now we've got both of those going just by pushing both of those buttons. So 
So it's it's really throwing some firepower out there when it's doing that. Okay, and this final sound, guys, is going to be the dying sound at the very end of the movie when the virus kills the aliens. You see that ship slowly kind of power down and crash. So here we go with that. And all the lights slowly die out. So that is really, really sweet, guys. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the uh, overhead light off for you so you can just see this beautiful uh, effect that we get here on the bottom of this plaque. I mean, it's just gorgeous with these green lights. So it's a really killer display, guys. And uh, I had a lot of fun building this up. I had a lot of fun developing this whole thing with Ralph. We worked really hard on the sounds, and then uh, we made a couple of, after talking it over, we made a couple of modifications on the lighting uh, to make it a little bit more effective. And uh, as you can see, the sounds are nice and clear. And this is a really nice tribute to the movie. It's one of the all-time classic sci-fi movies of all time. And this makes for a really wonderful display when you combine it with this model and the plaque and the base. Just a beautiful, gorgeous display, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back again in a few more days with some more work on the Enterprise refit. So this has been the Martian War Machine buildup. And thanks again, Ralph, so much for uh, making this happen. Uh, we kind of talked about this a while ago, and you did an excellent job on this. So that's going to be a wrap, everybody. Take care out there and build those models. Until we see you next time, happy modeling, everyone.